everybody. Good afternoon to you. How are you? So Chantal's been very busy today. She did a live where she was in the dark. I don't know why she was in the dark, but she did a live where she turned out the lights and she was doing the live in the dark. I've got theories about that, but I will save them for later on in the video. Also, I was reacting to that particular live and she posted a video. So what's in the video? Well, she did a video talking about her. Is it hypoglycemia? Am I saying that right? If I'm not, I apologize. But the long and short of it is her blood sugar was still way too high and she went to the doctor and they, I guess, prescribed her medication. They checked her out. Her blood sugar was sitting in the 20s when normal blood sugar should be about five or six. Her blood sugar is three times over what it should be. So she made herself ill and she decided I'm going to go to the doctor and complain to the doctor, even though the doctor's going to tell me things and I'm not going to listen. I'm still going to go and make a big boo-hoo over it. So yeah, she decided to do that and then make a video and try to make money off of her misery. Although she is the one who created the misery in the first freaking place, you know, working all angles first. I'm going to cater to people who have a food fetish. Next, I'm going to make myself sick. Then after I make myself sick, I'm going to get in front of the audience and boohoo about how sick I am. I do not have sympathy for people like that. You cannot walk up to a stove that's turned on high, place your hand on the burner, burn yourself on purpose, and then turn around and complain about it. Because what was going on there was not an accident. It was not an oopsie. It was thought out. It was calculated for purpose, for profit. So if you decide you want to hurt yourself, Chantal, you're going to do self-harm content on YouTube. For the sake of being the center of attention and money, don't come crying to all of us. We don't care. We don't care. You've had so many moments and so many times when you could have made yourself better. You could have turned things around, but you chose not to because you're stupid and you're greedy and you thought you were so smart catering to all the fetish people. How smart do you feel now? Your mobility is limited. You can't even walk across a room. Your breathing sucks. You're in Kuwait. You can't go nowhere. You can't do nothing. You're with a paid for companion that every day you guys fight he can't stand you. He looks at you as a burden. That's the happy life you paid for. That's the one you want for yourself. Well, enjoy it. Please enjoy it. I love it the most for you. I really do. I love it the absolute most. You always get what you pay for and you always get what you deserve. And you're getting a little bit of both right now, Chantal. Yes, you are. So how about we get into the Twitter stuff? There's some interesting tidbits on Twitter. Okay, so, oh, and I didn't pull up Chantal's stream. Hold on. Let me pull up Chantal's uh, video. I don't know why I didn't do that. My apologies. Oops. That was completely my bad. I had it pulled up, and for some reason, I got rid of it. Maybe because I was going backwards in the tabs. That's okay. It won't take long to get back there. Oh, this was streamed 20 hours ago. The love I'm about to review. Okay, shut up, Chantal. Don't say a word yet. I'm not ready for you. Okay, we're ready. I'm, I'm ready to go the, the Twitter stuff. Perfect. All right. So let's start here with Honey Banked. Honey Banked? <laughs> honey Baked Hippie. There, I said it. Honey Baked Hippie says she got a new toy. She was shook with that reading. She fasted 12 hours without a snack. She really thought her number would be low. She'd show her haters live. Look how excited she looks like a kid on Christmas, but really they got coal in their stocking. So here's the thumbnail for the live. Her showing off her blood glucose monitor, like somebody would show off a new toy that they get at Christmas time. Somebody making health into their content is not a bad thing 
But someone like Chantal, that she's mocking her own bad health. She's making fun of it. She's making fun of her diabetes. She's downplaying how serious everything is. That's the part I don't like. Like she's making it into a joke. Diabetes, high blood sugar, high blood pressure. These are things that are not a joke. But she's treating them like a joke. She, she does. She made herself sick. And at every opportunity, she wants to make money, not just off of her uh, obsession with food, but the sicknesses that come from her obsession. It's like she's working all the angles and I, I just don't like it. But she does look excited. But before we get into the live, I would like to give my thoughts on what happened in that live. So yeah, she was streaming in the dark. Uh, maybe she turned off the lights. Maybe she had a blemish on her face that she didn't want shown. Uh, maybe she took something like a party favor. And if she's under the influence of something, the eyes are a dead giveaway. So maybe she was taking something and she didn't want anybody to know. So let's just turn the lights off so nobody can see my pupils. Uh, there could be all kinds of reasons why the lights were out, but it's just weird. You're doing a live and you're going to turn the lights out on your audience. <laughs> but going back to the monitor situation, I think for the longest time, Chantal has been lying to Salah. And all of this focus now on health, all of this talk about I'm going to get healthy and I'm eating healthy food, could it be because? Charlie Gold is back and Charlie Gold looks fabulous these days. And Chantal always covets what other people have. Even if they don't throw what's going on with them in her face, she covets. If you got something that she secretly desires, she covets, she gets jealous, she gets insecure. But on a deeper level, honestly, I think Salah is about tired of her nonsense. He's really tired. He's about over it. I'm sure the money is not as plentiful as it used to be. It's getting down to the wire of him looking at her and the money just keeps getting lower and lower and lower. And so he's looking at her and thinking, man, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. What am I hanging out for? What am I wasting my life for? I'm not even getting proper financial compensation. Like all the headache and drama and fights she brings to me and I am aging so fast because of her. I can't justify this anymore. He can't go anywhere. He can't do anything. She's becoming more of a liability and a burden. If they go out, he has to make sure that it's in the dark. There's nobody else around. All the places have to be deserted. Like she's constantly in need of food. Can you imagine living with somebody like that, dealing with somebody like that, I, I would tear my hair out. But I think they may have had a fight or a talk. And he's told her flat out, look, I want to travel. I'm young and I want to go do things. I'm sorry if you don't. Maybe you're happy being an indoor kind of gal, but I'm an outdoors kind of guy. You knew that when we first started talking. I want to go out and be with my friends. I want to go do things. You don't. That's your issue. And you're stopping me from living and I'm tired of it. And so in Ch true Chantal fashion, she might have said, I'm so sorry. I'll take care of my health now. I'm really going to try Salah. So when he's around, she acts like she gives a crap about her health. But the moment he walks out that door for anything, if he's gone for five minutes, you best believe she's running to that kitchen. She's running to that pantry and she's pulling that food out. She's scarfing it down as fast as she can. And another thing about that. So there's been talk and rumors that maybe Salah is controlling the money. Maybe he does have control of the money. Chantal has mentioned that she gave Salah control of the money due to the fact that she's very irresponsible when it comes to her money, that unless somebody has control of it, she'll spend every cent. I believe that. I believe she's very impulsive and she'll go through her paycheck within a matter of days. So 
then there's the question of if that's true rose if he does have control of the money and she wants to have a b moment how would she accomplish that oh that's easy y'all that is so easy she's got instagram she's got paypal she's got contact with the feedy people she can talk to some of them and they can pay for her meals or they can send her money on paypal and she could buy meals behind Salah's back. And it's money that goes to PayPal, not her bank account. It's side money that he don't know about. I'm just saying it could it could happen. It could not happen. But it's, that's another avenue of a way that she could sneak eat behind his back. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. If you want something and you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to get it. Always and every occasion. All right, going on to Yup Yup. Foodie Beauty claims she's required to take 2,000 milligrams of Janumet per day, along with other medications to help control her diabetes. If true, then she's at the maximum allowable dose. And if all the pills she's taking don't work, then her next step is insulin. Yeah, and Chantal's talked about being insulin resistant. So if you are insulin resistant, wouldn't that be a problem? If you're taking pills and then the pills stop working and you can't even go to insulin, wouldn't that mean you're absolutely effed? Kind of sounds like it. You know, you know what, Chantal? Listen, you can do what you want with your body and your life. You're, you're going to anyway. But this is this is madness. It's it's absolute madness. You're doing you're you're beating up on your body for why? What did it do to you? Why are you being so brutal to your own body when you have to live in your own body? Like, why are you punishing it so much? Is it because it's not everything you want it to be? You can't get mad at it when you're the one in control of it. You know, like, stop beating up on your poor organs. Good Lord. Uh, yup Yup says, this Kiwi farmer seems to have an explanation for Foodie Beauty's 21 22 16 blood sugar mystery is foodie eating food behind scat man's back while he sleeps hey i'm on board with this kiwi farmer i don't know them but i am full and i will not only die on that hill but before i die on it i'll stand on it i will pitch a tent i'll make a fire i'll roast marshmallows i will never get off that hill but let's look at the post from is it bocce something or another gal galoop? Okay, so bocce says simple explanation for the discrepancy between new is it You know what I'm talking about. The, the new reading and clinic reading. Chantal lies. Chantal's initial BG reading was not a fasting reading. Shocking, I know. The red flag went up for me when she said she hadn't eaten for 12 hours. I think it's been decades since Chantal went that long without shoveling food in her mouth. We know Chantal is a secret eater and raids the kitchen in the middle of the night to get her fix. Salah's reaction seems to back that up. He also finally seems aware of what a lying eat beast he's hooked up with. He seemed to rather accusingly ask her when she last ate. She seemed to answer him rather defensively. She has been getting up while he's sleeping and having bee moments no mystery the meter is fine Chantal lies yeah I, I'll stand with that I'll stand with that and put a flag on that and say that's what's going on because I said in the last react that I did of her listen she's a food addict period and she's an extreme one at that she told us herself that she eats every two hours and we see what she eats she's all about bulk and volume one meal for her is equal to the meal of like four to six people and she does that every two hours so here is this extreme food fetishist who eats in volume and bulk who has an extreme love for sugar and carbs that that is their routine that is their ritual this is what they get paid to do. This is what they've been doing for basically 30 years. And you're going to tell me 30 years of abusing her own body, monetizing her issue, 
catering to people who are willing to pay for her to hurt herself. Suddenly she can cure all that in four days. I don't believe it. All that routine and all that ritual revolving around food. If she were for real trying to fix herself, she'd be freaking out right about now, y'all. She would. Going without the junk food, going without the fast food, going without the immense amount of carbs, she'd be flipping out. And I mean flipping out. Her mind would be flipping out. Now, I know this sounds weird. You'd be like, why would she be flipping out over a portion of rice or a soda? It almost seems ridiculous, right? Well, hey, an addiction is an addiction is an addiction. If you're addicted to something, you don't get it. You're craving it. You're feeding for it. Like you're, you want it. You, and you're flipping out because you're not able to get it. Or you're trying to stop yourself from getting it. Yeah. So I, I'm with Bachi. I think every chance she gets, she's sneak eating. She's going to the kitchen. She's going to the pantry. Uh, maybe she has her feedy people send her money through PayPal and she's ordering extra meals. I mean, when she was with BB, that's what she was doing. She was sneak eating behind his back. And then when she was with Natter, she would scarf down a bunch of food before she went over to his house. And then after she left the next morning, where would she go? She would go straight to a Starbucks and get like, double fist those drinks and then she would get a whole bunch of nashies she was sneak eating i think her and salah have had a talk and he's tired of her being a burden he's tired of her being a liability he's tired of the nonsense it's not worth it anymore and she's made her empty promises i promise i'll be better i promise i promise i promise but just trying to buy herself some extra time with Salah, knowing full well she doesn't have control and she's not going to get control, but just doing what she can do, lying as much as she can lie to keep him there. But he don't want to be there, Chantal, and financially it's not worth it anymore. You are straight up a liability for him, for Kuwait, for yourself. You are a burden. You are no fun. You are no party on wheels. And he's, he's waking up to that. He's waking up to the fact that you got an issue with food and he can't stop you from it and you're not stopping yourself. All you're going to do is make yourself worse. He's waking up to it. The party is over. It's time to come home. If you're smart, you'll come home. All right. Perfectly Imperfect says, we always knew foodie was delusional, but but no, we really know. Imagine stopping your diabetes medication simply because you lost a few pounds in a week. Yeah, really. She's stupid. She's stupid. She, she's got medications to help her with her diabetes or high blood pressure, or high blood sugar, but she doesn't like taking them. Oh, they make me feel uncomfortable. They make me feel sick. So you literally choosing death? I mean, because door number one, you take medication and, and maybe for a while you don't feel comfortable because your body's getting adjusted to it. But after a while, it might adjust to it. Door number two, you meet the Grim Reaper. I mean, I'm sorry. I'll take door number one. I am not eager to meet the Grim Reaper, but I guess you are. You're such a marshmallow, Chantal. You're so soft. You're like, it's, it's too uncomfortable. I would rather be in a casket. Okay. Okay, girl. I mean, that's what you want to do. Hey, who can stop you? Uh, don't fence me in, says, which candle should we be lighting? Is it too late for Chantal? All she has to do is take her doggone meds, cut out the sugar and carbs, and move a bit more. But I don't think she will do it. No, I don't think so either. So, yeah, there, there's Chantal. There's a picture of Chantal. Look at her. Does she look healthy? Is this the face of a healthy woman? Is this look like this? Is this the face of somebody who's on the mend? No. Nope. And this unfortunately is a picture of uh, the the departed light by Jen, who's no longer with us. And gone too soon, Jen. But notice the slight similarities between Chantal and Jen. 
Like, I, I don't know what causes it. It's, there might be different things, but notice that just as Chantal, one side of her face is kind of swollen. So is Light by Jen. Like that happened to her as well. I don't know if it's a, if it's a heart condition, if it has to do with your circula uh, circulatory system, uh, but it's just, it's, Chantal knows about Jen and what happened to her. And you would think that would caution her from following a similar path, but it's not like she just does not care. She's being defiant and stupid. MJK23 says from Cigna Kuwait, she has no health insurance, so she can't just walk into any doctor and be seen immediately. It's all made up that she's seen a doctor in less than 12 hours. Would really like Milk Tea Reacts to comment in a video as her speculation based on her experience. Okay, so let's read. Because we like pulling up some receipts and getting information. Cigna Healthcare, cons. Expats are discouraged from using the public system in some cases and may find longer queues and extended wait times as hospitals prior to prioritize Kuwaiti nationals. So if you're an expat, if you're a tourist, you're at the back of the line. It would make sense. They want to make sure that they're that the people who live there get priority care. Uh, use of the public system requires expats register with a local insurance scheme to enable access at a reduced cost. The state scheme cannot be used at private care facilities. So if you're an expat wanting to access a private hospital, you'll need full insurance. Pay attention to this part, Chantal. Ambulances are rare and reserved for absolute emergencies. In most cases, you'll be required to make your own way to the hospital. You hear that? Did you hear that? Beezers, did you hear that? That last part right there, did you hear it? If something happens to Chantal at home, if she's lucky enough that somebody is nearby, like Salah, even if he calls the, you know, like emergency help, 911, if ambulances are rare, they're not a common thing in Kuwait. It's rare. Also, let's take into account, Chantal, your size. And don't yell and scream at me about, oh, you're fat shaming me, fat phobia. No, mama, no. You are bigger than average, which means you're going to need a bigger than average stretcher, right? Yeah, you're going to need a bigger, you're going to need a larger stretcher, not a normal size stretcher. You're also going to need, if you need to get, if you do get an ambulance, you're going to need at least six people to pick you up and put you on that stretcher because just two people ain't going to get it done. 600 pounds? Are you serious? That means each person would have to lift 300 pounds. And most paramedics are not bodybuilders, okay? So if something happens to you at the Oceanside Villa, at the fart box, you're not going to be able to get an ambulance and Salah is not going to be able to pick you up and carry you down to the car and take you to the hospital. These are things to think about. If you're in another country that is not your own, you don't really have any proper health care. Ambulances are rare. If something happened to you at home or, or just out, there probably won't be an ambulance to pick you up. Who's going to do CPR? Just think about this stuff, Chantal. Something happens to you in Kuwait. Listen, I'm just going to keep, keep it real. You're effed. Do you understand? You're effed. You know you're effed. If you don't care, if you're fine with that, you're fine with that. But like, there's so many things stacking against you. All your major organs are screwed. They're not in good working order. You keep beating up on yourself with food. It's ridiculous. All of it is ridiculous. Tara Lee says, I checked out the new Mr. Beast view stats on Foodie. It's supposed to be more accurate than other stats sites. Talk about a dying channel. 
income in the last 28 days shows $923 to $2,000, like $2,500. Yeah, even if she were on the higher end, that money's already gone. <laughs> okay, but after her paying for her rent at the villa and buying the food, like the, the, even if she were to make almost $3,000, it's, it's a done deal. She's over there with her Canadian money. The Kuwaiti dinar is much stronger. Her Canadian dollar is much weaker. She's broke, broke. She really is broke, broke. A coffee drinker and yup, yup. Say another foodie beauty lie has been exposed. According to the farms, Ancestry.com says a Sorol name existed in America, Canada, and Scotland between 1871 and 1920. No mention of France. And they didn't exist anywhere near the Tudor or Napoleonic periods. Uh, according to Ancestry.com, the Sorol family name was found in the United States, Canada, and Scotland between 1871 and 1920. The most Sorol families were found in Canada in 1911. No mention of the Sorol name being found in France. So, maybe the name Sorol is not French. And isn't that something, y'all, when we think about how she puts down the Western world? Yet some of your ancestors were over here in the United States, it would seem, Chantal. Some of your ancestors were over here in the States. I'm sure they we wouldn't claim you, though. But there you go. You're not French. Uh, Ghostcraft said, uh, a little recap saying, her glucose meter is off. She lies, took metformin on live. Salah let her herple into bank, even though she's sick. What? Clinic value says 16.7, which is in the 300s. Thinks the meds will save her. Uh, no. ER doctor says no emergency. They don't care. Says no fruit, no bread. <laughs> you know what? The ER doctor probably took, the ER, do the ER doctor probably knows Chantal by her first name. Because she's constantly going to the doctor. They probably know her on a first name basis. And they know when she walks in that, you know, whatever they tell her is going to go in one ear and out the other. And they're not even going to bother. If it's an emergency room doctor, they look at each case and go, is this person on the brink of death? Like right now, right here, this minute. And the answer is no. Then it's not a priority compared to the person coming in that they've gone through something tragic and they might lose their life in seconds. So yeah, they're going to look at her and go, eh, it's not an emergency. She's fine. She's walking. She's talking. She's good. You know, they, their priority are people that want the help, need the help, or they're, they're like seconds from losing their life. And she doesn't care about hers. So the doctors, the doctors are probably like, why bother talking to this one? She's not going to listen anyhow. Screw her. Just let her go. She's going to go anyway. Uh, Fondue Pondu says, Foodie, how in the F is it broke? If salad was spot on, F you, your delusions are going to something. Oh, well. So here's a comment from Foodie on this video saying, I don't know what's wrong with the machine. It's brand new and a good brand here from the pharmacy. I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, People in her own chat during this live, when she said, oh, it's too high. The meter is broken. It must be broken. They were like, well, Salah is there. Give him a reading and see what it says. Because if it's broken, it'll give him a bad reading too. So she gave him a reading. His reading was normal. So she got exposed for lying. The meter was snitching on her. It was snitching, y'all straight up snitching and she was like a little kid with her hand caught in the cookie jar because there was Salah and he saw the meter he saw the reading and I'm I don't know how much knowledge he has of diabetes but I'm sure that something filtered through that he's like man that's not my reading is five and hers is 22 that ain't normal that ain't normal at all that sounds pretty dangerous so she got caught in real time by her chat by Salah. 
It wasn't like she did a video and she could edit that part out and hide it from him. No, he was right there to see it. And I'm sure the wheels were turning in his brain like, hold on. Why is her reading so high? She's over here claiming that she's fasting and she's not eating much. I don't see her eating crazy when I'm here. What is going on? You know he's gonna, going to investigate. You're sneak eating, Chantal. Girl, you can't hide from me. You can't. You've had this little habit for years. You'll do the eating in front of people that will not, they won't scold you for it. But the people that will scold you for it, you'll hide it from them. But you'll keep doing it. It, it never occurs to you that maybe you should just stop. You, you want to keep going. There's nothing wrong with the machine. What's wrong is you abusing your body with food and eating nothing but sugar these days. The fruit, the bread, the pasta, nothing but sugar. Is it any wonder your blood sugar is up so high? Uh, Fondu Pondu says, I see the water and refreshing hydrating fruit diet is working out as expected. Yeah, so there's the reading, y'all. Look, 22. 22 to convert that over this her, her blood sugar is in the 400s so that means one of two things chantal i'm going to put my money on two things two numbers the first number that last night when salah went to bed or when he wasn't there you went to town on the carbs you had a big time royal b moment you ate a bunch of carbs and then you went to bed. And as you were sleeping, your body couldn't process all of that sugar quickly because you were sleeping. If you went to bed after a big meal and you're waking up 12 hours later and your blood sugar is like that, there is a problem. Theory number two. He left you alone this day. While he was gone, you scarfed down as much food into your maw as you could thinking he wouldn't know and he wouldn't find out. But then that monitor is telling on you. Because look at look at your blood sugar. Either you carb loaded the night before or you carb loaded up before this reading. Thinking you could just hide it, although the, the monitor is snitching on you. So which is it, Chantal? Either is bad, either means a B moment, but like what which scenario is true here? Okay, two-tailed caper says, we're all aware that Foodie knows how to tear scales for her weigh-ins. Now she knows how to tear her blood glucose monitor. Just don't wash your hands. The dirt and grime on her short, grubby digits must have confused the poor machine. Hilarious and outrageous. Yeah, so it gave like a reading of 21. Then she tried to lie and say, oh, I ate watermelon. I still must have it on my fingers. So she went and washed her hands and did another reading, and the next reading was even higher. <laughs> It was even higher. Uh, Tat Von B says, listen to this person. He's telling the viewers to stop stressing her, but he's the one who has stressed her and enabled her. Stop talking, scat man, and go eat. Uh, so let's listen to the clip. I have to replan everything I'm like, like eat putting in my body, you know, because not eating doesn't help. Clearly, I didn't eat since yesterday at five. If anything, it might make again lies detected. My BS meter just went off. She's trying to claim that she hasn't eaten for 12 hours. I'm telling you, if if that were the case, she would be ravished by now, like ready to eat somebody's shoes. 12 hours and you're not eating it. Like you get that hungry, you're like, your stuff. Why is her stomach not growling? When I get hungry, my stomach growls. It makes noises. It's, it's, it's signaling, hey, put something down here. We don't care what. Just put something down here so we'll shut up. Why is your stomach not growling? Why is that making all them noises? Why is she so perfectly calm? If you get really hungry, you start freaking out. Like, I'm, I'm ready to eat somebody's shoes. I'm ready to eat this, a stop sign down the street, whatever it takes to fill up my stomach. Food addict and she's not freaking out. She ate something. 
before this reading. She did. That's how she's able to stay calm. Make things worse. I don't know how it raises your blood sugar not to eat. Yeah, Millie said stress can raise blood sugar and you all stressing here <laughs> and freak out. Just yeah. chill down. Calm, calm down. Yeah, it's true, yeah. Just send her any positive comments. Shut up. Shut up, Salah. Shut up. Sir, you are over there enabling her. You've been enabling her for over two years. You're the big stupid idiot that you invited her over there to hide and be a shut-in in that apartment for two years. You're the one that goes out and buys her food. You're the one that delivers her takeout. You're the one that you know about her mukbangs and you haven't put your foot down. You haven't walked away. You can't sit there and go to the audience and tell them, send her some encouragement. At the same time, you're doing things that contribute to her bad health. You're willing to look the other way as long as you get paid. So don't talk to us. Talk to yourself first. It's my fault to test it on live stream. I'm stupid. There, there's a big difference between something like someone concerned or worry and someone sending the negative vibes. It's wrong. Shut up. Yeah. We are trying to help her here, not to uh, increase the, the <laughs> hard blood. Salah, listen. You don't like the reaction channels and trust. We don't like you either. We know how you feel about women, especially women in the Western world. We know what you want to do to us. You disgusting, slimy man. We know. We know all about you. But you're living in Delulu land as much as she is. If you think that all it would take to make her better is some positive vibes. You need to get it through your head. She is an addict. She's a food addict. She needs inpatient, sir. Strict, locked down, uh, supervised inpatient. The kind of inpatient where you are not left alone. Where you have absolutely no freedom. Pretty much like, like jail. She needs like a type of jail. She needs a team of people helping her. She needs to listen to people. She's got to be in an environment where she can't do what she wants. Because if you let her do what she wants, she's going to hurt herself. But this issue of hers, it's over her head. It's over your head. She's using it to control you and manipulate you. She'll have B moments and then she'll turn around and blame them on you. Her plan is to become bed bound and have you wait on her. Did you know that? That you're being set up to be her full-time caretaker. Are you up for the job? Does it sound like fun to you? Giving her a bath, changing her clothes, changing her bedpan. Hope you don't break your back doing it. Because you can injure yourself doing a job like that. It's 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 a serious task. But she's she's got thoughts in her head that you're gonna be her caretaker when she becomes bedbound. And she's full-time in the seal position. How do you feel about that? Once that happens, no going out for you, no going out to the Red Room, no going anywhere. And that's exactly the way she wants it. She wants to tie you to her side 24-7. She is manipulative like that. To have her fantasy life of being taken care of and feeling like a queen, she will manipulate circumstances to where you are obligated and responsible to take care of her forever. If that's not your idea of happiness, you need to get out now. Like right now. Buy a plane ticket, put her butt on the plane and send her home. It's going to get worse. It's going to get much worse. Sophia's leaning Crocs says the squinting from the diabetic ret retino retinopathy is just a cherry on top of this picture. Yeah, she has glasses. Why doesn't she wear her glasses? Shenanigan says Chantal tested Salah's blood and his reading was normal. Now he's concerned. Oh, now he's concerned. Her lack of mobility, dragging her foot. Not being able to walk across the room. None of that was concerning before, but this is. Okay. Uh, Eve's hasty bun 
says, just did a quick scroll through my feed to see that Chantal's blood sugar is 22.6. That's 406.8. Normal blood sugar is 4.6 or 83. At this point, I believe she's either too stupid to live or she's actively trying to unalive herself. Like, I don't know. All I know is she's not grabbing on a life. She keeps flirting with the Grim Reaper. And he doesn't like to be flirted with. Okay, so what else we got here? Uh, D Angry Scott says, Foodie Beauty doesn't understand why her blood sugars are out of control, but also doesn't take her meds every day. Also, why would you want to be on insulin? Because for attention, let's let's watch. I have to be really, really, really strict. Really stricter, more strict, strict. Because I'm just like equating like, oh, I lost 15 kg, I'm eating natural food. But I guess when you're insulin resistant, you can't just, you know. So if she's already insulin resistant, she's on pills. Like I mentioned earlier, if, she, if, if she's, if the pills don't work and the insulin doesn't work, what's next? Is there anything after that? I mean, is that the end? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. If I start feeling worse or whatever, I'm going to see a doctor anyways about it. So. Why, why bother? Why bother seeing a doctor? You see them, you talk to them, they talk to you, and you don't listen to them. So why waste their time? Let them see patients that are sick that want to get better. You don't. I don't think they have house call doctors. I don't know. <laughs> she knows her body. Got to go. Yeah, that's crazy. That's stupid. I'm so annoyed with myself. You know, but yeah, I have to get it under control. I don't take my medication regularly. I'm just going to be honest. Like I'm stupid. Yeah. You're stupid and you're reckless and you want sympathy and butt pats and hugs for being stupid. You get on YouTube and you treat your diabetes and your health issues like they're complete funny jokes and they're not funny jokes. Diabetes is not a joke. High blood pressure is not a joke. High blood sugar is not a joke. The fact that all of your organs are screwed is not a joke. You might have nerve damage in your leg and that's why you're dragging your foot. None of that stuff is funny. But you're playing it off like it's no big deal and it's all a big deal. Any one of those things I just named could put you in a casket. I don't know if you want to go there or not, but it seems like you you're almost rushing to the cemetery. You know. And every time I go see a doctor, they're like, you know, my, they see my blood sugars. Like the last time I went, the one time I went to see the doctor was 23. And um, you're going to come test. OK, babe, wash your hands. And. Um, Did you hear that? Salah? She, she's reminding you. The last time she went to the doctor, her blood sugar was as high as it is now. So she went to the doctor before about this. Did anything change? No. Did she get any healthier after that? No. Do you get it? She's not going to change. She's not going to get better. Here's your sliding door moment. Door number one. You stick with her. She gets worse and she might have a medical event that you're going to be freaking out and you won't even know how to deal with. I hate to say it this way, and I'm sorry, y'all, because it's going to be kind of rude. But Salah, if you don't send her back home to Canada, you might come back to the Oceanside Villa to a 550 pound dead problem on your living room floor. Then what's she going to do? She's a liability. She's a burden. She's a risk. There's no more juice in that lemon. You feel me? She's, she's not a moneymaker anymore. She's barely making anything. Her health is getting worse. It's time to send her butt home. Send her back to Canada. Walk away from this shit. I'm not on your side. I think you're a scumbag too, but like, I guess there's no fixing stupid. <laughs> You can't, you can fix a broken clock. You can fix a broken TV, but you can't fix stupid. Like the warning signs are all there. The foodie tannic is, it's in the final phase of sinking. 
we are at that part of the movie where that last part of the ship is sticking butt end up in the water like straight up and down and it's just bobbing like a cork before the water starts to suck it in that that's where we are with foodie Anybody who's smart will see the writing on the wall and act accordingly, including you, Salah, including you. I mean, all, all the signs are there. She's not making money anymore. Her health is getting worse. She doesn't care. There's going to be no improvement here. Why stick around? Why stick around? You stick around for her, you might see something you don't want to see that's going to traumatize you. Ah, Ghostcraft says, so Chinny had a sugar of 407, and that was after she'd already drank water. Hyperglycemia starts at over 250. Values above 400 are life-threatening. Most patients that have DKA present values above 250. Mr. Snowflake said he's trying to finish the series before she passes away. Hurry. Yeah. I, I, you know, Mr. Snowflake, I'm sorry, sir. I know that documentaries and docu-series, they take time to put together, especially the ones that you've been putting together. And you've been doing excellent work. But yeah, like the clock is ticking on this one. The sand is running rapidly through the hourglass. So I hope you get to finish the series out. I really do. I really, really do. Uh, yup, yup says a good thing about foodie's high blood sugar is that scat man finally seems con concerned and therefore might start confronting foodie about what she eats, which she'll totally hate. This dynamic only works if scat man allows and enables foodie to do whatever she wants. Well, here's the problem. Yes, she's in Kuwait. Yes, she's in a country where she doesn't really know how to speak the language. She doesn't have a car. She can't get around, but she controls a very important aspect the money the money and he doesn't have his own money or at least enough that he could support himself and you know flip her the middle finger and walk away she controls the money she made sure to control the money because as long as she controls the money he can't he doesn't have any dominion over it. he can't tell her what to do with the money he can't hold it away from her he can't stop her from buying stuff if it's her money She's out of control in every way, but she may control over that for a reason, to keep the addictions going and nobody can stop her from doing them. Uh, Hidden Truth says, Foodie Beauty, you can't rationalize a situation and just have excuses. She blamed the machine until Salad takes his blood sugar and it reads normal. We need a live weight reading. She doesn't do these live because she can edit. Today she showed truth. Everybody already knew though. Yeah. Yep, let's watch. Let's change subject. Yeah, I don't know why I did that live. I don't know why. Now it's going to like be this big uproar. <clears throat> I didn't think it would be high. Like Now that there's really no uproar, foodie. That's where you're you're getting it wrong. We are not in an uproar. We've been known. The reactions, community, the reactors, the audience, the subscribers, we've been known. We've been known that you've been hurting yourself with food. We've been known that you have the sneak eating. We've been known that you're all about the sugar and the carbs. We we see it. You've shown it to us. You keep changing your story, though, saying, oh, I'm eating better. I'm eating fruit. Well, get, what, do, what is fruit? Fruit is sugar. So you're eating lots of fruit, sugar, which is bad for a diabetic, uh, rice, which is carbs that turn into sugar. So your diet anymore is pure sugar. You're trying to find a sneaky way to get the sugar that you're craving. And I'm sure that when Salah isn't there, you order stuff or you have stuff ordered for you and you hide it from him. You know you do. I really like, it's eye-opening that like, once you have diabetes, it's like, it doesn't, like you, you have to get it under control. Like Chantal, you knew about your diabetes years ago, years and years and years ago. You didn't care then. You didn't. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, like I have to eat, like, bas basically, like, zero, 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 you know? Thanks. That's wrong. Eh, wrong answer. It's, it, it's not that at all. It's not that you have to just basically eat nothing. You have to eat. It's you have to eat well. You have to eat healthy portions. 
and healthy foods. The days of going wild with the fast food, done. You've got to eat healthy food. You don't want to do that, though. For you, it's either all or nothing. Either I'm going to eat the food that I want or I'm going to eat nothing. There's not an in-between. There's not a middle ground when there is a middle ground. Exactly. Hi, Hi. Living Laura. Hi, Dr. Hi, babe. Can you test my blood? Yeah. Perfect. Like, oh. perfect. <laughs> is it normal? <laughs> it's normal. So his his blood was like five. Is it vanilla? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So the machine okay. is working. Uh, take an alcohol swab here, babe. Okay, but I'm worrying about you now. Yeah, like it, it took two years and you're just now worrying about her, bro? Really? Two years you watched her stuff her face, having those mobility issues, eating massive amounts of food that you brought to her, and now you're worried. So the machine <laughs> is working very well. There's no mistake. You feel what the heck? I have very high blood sugar. What do you feel about your body now? You notice how she said that? I have high blood sugar. I mean, she's talking all softly like a little girl who's been caught doing something she ain't supposed to do. I to feel okay. To I took a pill. I'm going to wait like um, a couple hours. Take my blood again. Mm -hmm. I'm just up. And that's something I don't like about Chantal. She's not really concerned for her diabetes. In my opinion, I think that she, like, first of all, she doesn't take her medication the way she should. If she did, she'd be a lot better off. Like, what is the point of getting medication if you're not going to take it right? You're, you're not getting the full benefit of it. Secondly, I think she gets medication for the purpose of abusing it, getting the pills, getting the insulin shots, just basically trying to find workarounds to continue to have B moments. Like, she'll have a B moment drive her blood sugar all the way up to almost diabetic coma level, go to a hospital, go to a clinic, get a shot, get a pill. They'll get her blood sugar back down to a somewhat normal level. She'll feel better. Then she'll go out and do it all again. Just using the medical system and using insulin and using pills to continue her addiction. Maybe the medication, the antibiotics, I don't know, I'm still sick. Then we'll see. But yeah, I have to follow up with a doctor eventually there. Like what he will say? I need to uh, take a medication? <laughs> I was you should take your medication. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering about something. I'm sorry, I'm straying over here. Um, I'm just wondering about like, because in this slide that I'm about to review. Let's see. I'm just like in, in the live. Let's see. In the live, Chantal is back to doing that uh, awful, loud, grunting, throat clearing noise. <clears throat> Y'all remember it. It's back. I don't know why it's back. I don't know what caused it to come back, but it, it's getting on my nerves. So I'm wondering if... There's a reason for it. Like, what, what is causing it? What's causing it? I mean, there's this. I'm looking right now. There's something, uh, let's see, like, there's, I was wondering, is it linked to her obesity? Excessive body weight, and this is a long word for Scrabble, gastro, if, Ephesophagal reflux disease. Uh, GERD. Oh my goodness, GERD. Uh, is strongly associated with excess body weight. GERD is characterized by typical symptoms with or without mucosal damage because of retrograde flow of gastric content into the esophagus. An effective uh, EG combined with anatomical abnormalities is considered to be caustic. The incidence of GERD is strongly associated with excessive body weight, reflecting the pathophysiological relevance of the abdominal thoracic pressure gradient. That's a bunch of big words. So, like, it, it, is her throat clearing? Is it is it linked to having GERD? 
Is it something else? I mean, is she back on the party favors? I don't know. But it's back and it's annoying and I hate it. Uh, Queen of WSTF says she can't believe that her fruit and carb diet are bringing her numbers up. Yeah, I guess shocker, huh? Real big shocker. Uh, Hidden Truth says foodie beauty. She's not going to survive long if she doesn't do something now and it may be too late. Salah is so clueless about her health. The point he says she looks fine. Wake up. She's on death's door. Take it seriously. She's been told and out of spite shows food. Well, she's defiant. She know. To fix everything, Chantal needs more than just a diet. A diet is not going to work for her. She needs a complete lifestyle change for the rest of her life. No more being a bad girl. No more being an overgrown toddler. She's got to grow up and take care of herself. And she doesn't want to grow up. It's not going to happen. All right. We're looking, looking here. And she did show her hair. And this is courtesy of Florida Salt and Sass and Barefoot Wild. She was showing her hair. I don't know why. Monica, this is a beautiful sunset. Okay, now this is something interesting and I want to include this. We all know that Chantal is infamous for borrowing other people's ideas, stories, intros, uh, video music. Now she's borrowing off a French fry girl. She did a video recently talking about her French heritage and going to school, learning how to speak French. That's Frenchie's story. Listen to this from Yup Yup. Chantal never attended a French immersion school and was thus never even remotely fluent in it. She got fired from a job for lying about being proficient in French. That's true. She did. When she wasn't at all. And seemingly every French speaking uh, person who has ever passed through this thread has remarked on her total inability to pronounce the few stray French words she occasionally throws around. But hey, you know who did attend a French immersion school as a child and is still a fluent poutine French speaker, French fried girl. Chantal has hijacked FFG's story about her childhood education and is telling it as if it's her own. I crap you not. Seriously, her brain is rotting out of her head at this point. If she thinks anybody but her most brain dead beaters is going to believe she was ever able to speak any French at all and not recognize FFG's story being passed off as her own. Chantal not only lies, but she's insane. And while I can't recall specific examples, I know she's been called out for stealing scenes from other people's life stories for things she's been seen in movies and pretending they are things that happened to her. I can confirm that. She did a video not too long ago where she talked about having a roommate and the roommate's name was Long Duck Dong. Does that name sound familiar with y'all? If you grew up in the 80s, it would be familiar because that is a character from the movie 16 Candles. The, the main character was Molly Ringwald. It was her birthday. Everybody forgot. But there was a foreign exchange student, Long Duck Dong. At, she, she borrowed from that movie. She totally borrowed from that movie. So yeah, she does that. She watches movies and, and she puts it into her story like it's her story and it's not. Okay. So let's get on to the actual video. Let's get on to the actual video. Let's get into it. It's hot in here. It's so hot. I need to open the door. Oh my God, I'm sweating. We'll, we'll get through it. We will. We're, we're not going to stay very long. Thank goodness her life doesn't go on that long. It's okay. I'm just sweating. That's all. Eh. Okay. Let's get to, let's get to. The topic for today is just talking to you guys. Hi, Fernanda. Hello, Derek, Cynthia, Elaine. <coughs> I have four more antibiotics to take. What, like, it's like, which year and they still haven't figured out how to make antibiotics small? <coughs> Hi, golden girl. Hello, nice to see you. Um, well, hi, pink stars. I'm feeling okay. Like, I, I'm a bit, like, uh, congested because I just got up not long ago. But hi, Joanne.
Vera. We're going to scoot ahead a little bit because you the first few minutes. She's just saying hi to people and I don't even care. I'm not too lively at any time of the day. <laughs> Hey, Mama from Iowa. Wow, Cynthia, congratulations to him. Wow. So Cynthia Breyer in the chat says, my special needs son just graduated from high school. Very proud of him. Well, I don't know you, sympathy, uh, Cynthia, but congratulations on your son. I think that's fantastic. They graduated from high school. But here's something you didn't know about Chantal. Are you aware, Cynthia? that Chantal has made fun of and mocked people who are special needs. She's done that many times in the past. She's also used the R word quite a bit in a very disrespectful way and then doubled down and defended using the R word saying, oh, when I was young, we used that word all the time. And yet here she is as an adult and she knows better. I just thought I'd let you know. I just want to let you know, you are a mother with a special needs son who's doing well, just graduated, but you're subscribed to somebody who has mocked people who are disabled and special needs and even used derogatory language relating to those with special needs. Oh, my special needs son just graduated from high school. That's an awesome achievement. Please wish him congratulations. Hi, Raw Olives, Ghostface. <coughs> oh, yeah, that I told you that that irritating. That <coughs> that's back. It's really strange. It she'll do it for a while and then she'll stop and then she'll do it for a while and then she'll stop. And back in the day when she was in the villa, that grunting throat clearing thing was directly tied to her parting with Natter when she was on the, you know, you know, she would do the, the snow that doesn't melt and the, the, the dripping down her throat would irritate her throat and she would constantly clear her throat. And then later on, if her throat got too raw, she would drink the cold drinks and eat a ton of ice cream. So how is it that it's come back. And why has it come back? Like what, what is causing that? It's just, it's, it's maddening. <coughs> I'm not in a bad mood. I'm just saying West Coast last. <laughs> what the heck? Benadryl. I'm going to try a plant leaf. Yeah. Geez. I hope it brings down the swelling. That's scary. Like it affects, if it affects your vision, you know, sorry to hear that. <coughs> Let me know how, you're, how it goes. Apologies for anybody in my audience. Like you're going to get as irritated as I'm already getting with her clearing her throat like that. It's it's ticking me off. I apologize for the irritation. I don't like it either. My ears absolutely hate it. Hi, GGBK. I mean, I live out in the middle of the doggone swamp. And there are bullfrogs outside that aren't as noisy as Chantal. Like I went from having the lovely peepers, the spring peepers that were singing their beautiful song at me and they're gone now. And now there's like a few bullfrogs. <laughs> they sound all kinds of weird, but they're not even as noisy as Chantal is. Is that a pick what? Okay, yeah. <coughs> so I have, I'm not turning the light on right now. I'm too tired. I have a uh, thing here, on-call blood glucose monitoring system. <laughs> and it comes with the machine. And, whoa, cool. I wish I didn't have to have this, but, okay, so. Yeah, well, you, you do have to have it and you wouldn't be in bad health if you didn't abuse your body with food. How about that? It comes with this couch, this little thing. I don't know what that is for. All of these are lancets and all of these are strips. So a hundred each and the lancer and the machine. 
Really, BBW Layla? Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, Golden Girl. I hope you feel better. Jeez. No, I don't have COVID. Or COVID. <laughs> Hi, SUP. <clears throat> Set for that, that freaking throat clearing. Arr! Stop it. For a while, yeah. Diabetes Debbie. <laughs> My other me meter's okay. It's like in the drawer here, but it's just cracked and... Yeah, you threw the monitor. You got mad at it and you threw it. You, it must have told you something you didn't want to see. I ran out of lancets in that, so I figure I may as well just get a whole new machine, you know? <coughs> no, Roach, it's called being fat. That's what causes the face swelling. No, no. I disagree. I'm not a doctor, Chantal, but it's just weird that only one side of your face is getting bigger than the other. I don't know why. I, I, only a doctor would know, but that might point in the direction of a circulation problem or a heart problem or something. You, you've had that for a while and you try to use filters trying to hide it, but it's not hiding it anymore. Uh. You can reverse insulin resistance by, I don't know if you, you can cure diabetes, but you can reverse insulin. You can't, you can't cure diabetes. You said before, I cured my diabetes just like you're ridiculous trying to claim, oh, I've, I've been a food addict for 30 years and all I had to do was get sick and not eat for four days and now I'm completely on top of it. You're full of crap. You are full of crap. Because I'm someone that I had an issue with food. And mine wasn't nearly as bad as yours is right now. And it took me six years to get on top of it. Six years, Chantal. And you're going to tell me you're someone that you've had 30 years of going through all this and developing routines and rituals around food and obsession with food. And in four days, you fixed it. You're lying to yourself thinking that. By proper diet and exercise yeah you can yeah but you're not doing the proper diet and you're certainly not going to do the exercise just not going to do either one you're sneak eating behind salah's back yes <coughs> thanks snoozy guys hi lois hey salah you want to know if she's been sneaking food we know that she can't go outside. Dude, do a sweep of that apartment. Look in all the closets. Look in all the little cubby holes. See if you see any bags of trash from takeout that you know that you didn't buy her. You know, do a sweep. You'll find some stuff. You'll find her snack bag. You'll find all that stuff. It is actually... Um, is your blood sugar higher when you just wake up? Maybe my sugar will be higher right now. Should I test it? I can try it. Hi, Lini. Husby's doing okay. He was in the chat here. It is so... Um, oh, really, Vera? Hi, Carolina. Hot. <laughs> it's 43 in the day, in the shadow. And uh, it's to the point where I have to turn my hot water tank off during the day if I want any cool... Even then, even then, I don't know. I... <clears throat> what is she even talking about? She doesn't take a shower. She doesn't shower like she should. There's no such thing as cold water during the day. Like if you want a cold shower, you got to wait till the evening. Uh, you know what? This is really simple. You know how you get cold water? Get a, get a plastic or glass pitcher or a gallon jug, fill it full of water and put it in your fridge and wait. This is simple. Water is water. It's just a matter of the temperature. Yeah, it's morning. It was morning prayer. Hi, Meep. <laughs> the other one broke. It just fell on the ground and cracked the screen. That's all. It still worked, but you cured your diabetes by losing 120 pounds. Awesome, Cynthia. Hi, Gloribel. Um watching any good shows what did i watch recently oh i started watching uh i found on 2b tv you guys gotta try 2b tv 
blush. <laughs> no, everywhere you go, it's summer. It's going to be hot anywhere. <clears throat> oh, really? Elemental pee? Yeah, you don't have to. I heard of those. Yeah, I might get one in the future. I don't watch Bridgerton. Hi, Coconut. Nice, Carolina. Bucket bath time. What? <clears throat> nice, hot tea, really? I'm going ahead. All right, let's do this. Let's curse in this. <clears throat> Let me drink. Let me, uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gora Bell Flores. I'm from, uh, okay, I'm Canadian and I live in Kuwait right now. Oh, I hate interviews. Anastasia. I did a couple of I'm noticing that Chantal's not wearing her face banks like they uh the head covering underneath the abaya, the abaya I'm sorry the hijab I wonder if it's because the head covering it's it's just becoming too tight you know she's gotten too big and it's entirely too small I know that in the past when I've worn wigs if they're even the slightest bit tight around this part of your head it can cause a massive headache like I, I'm sure like the, the, the head covering, it, it feels like a really tight, constrictive ace bandage around her head. But I'm like, uh, <clears throat> with people I shouldn't have, that's for sure. I'm doing okay, Anastasia. I'm feeling a lot better. <clears throat> I mean, my like infection wasn't that knock on wood, but I have to keep it up, you know? How do I use this thing? What do you guys put yours on? One or two? I don't know how to do this. We're gonna skip ahead by a lot because again, I don't I don't like Chantal treating her diabetes as a joke, as content. You know, she's not showcasing this stuff in an educational way. It's just her being in Kuwait, her not knowing what to do, her not knowing what else to talk about. So she's going to turn all of her health issues into content. Like, oh, I made myself sick. Now that I am sick and it's my fault, I want you guys to feel sympathy for me and send me money. And I'm, I'm not buying what you're selling, Chantal. Moving ahead. Oh, she got up. E4. What does that mean? Hi, Gloria. Let me just figure this out, guys. She She's known about her diabetes for years, and she's acting like she's never picked up a blood glucose monitor before. You should know what to do, Chantal. I hate this crap. Putting a new thing. I'm so dumb. Obviously, I have to put the strip in before I just pick my finger. Why am I like this? Again. Um, what the heck? Maybe I have to go on insulin. I don't know. I'm sorry. Did we miss the reading? I'll take it again in a few hours. I, I ate like... um. Yeah, I am. When did I eat last? And here she is trying to cover it up. Oh, my blood sugar reading was 22. That can't be right. I ate 12 hours ago. That can't be possible. It is possible if you had a massive B moment while Salah was asleep and you basically scarfed down everything in the kitchen and you loaded up on sugar and then went to bed. It is possible. Because while you're sleeping, everything slows down. So either A, you carb-loaded and you sugar-loaded before bed, or B, 
before Salah showed up and before you turned the camera on, you ate a bunch of carbs. So which is it? 5 p.m. And it's 4.30 a.m. Bye, golden girl. That can't be right. It is right. That's weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm still sick. I don't know. Or maybe the antibiotics. I don't know. You know what? I would love it if Chantal had to deal with Dr. Now. And she tried this crap on Dr. Now. And he's like, okay, let's test this theory. I'm going to put you in a room with a locking door. Food and everything will be brought into you. But let's see if you eat regular food, if your blood sugar goes up to 22. Let's test that out. That if you're here with me and you're in a room in a controlled environment, if your blood sugar spikes up that high or not. Bet you it wouldn't. Yeah, Snoopy. No, Carolina, I haven't been really good with my medication. I want to wait to see the doctor again so I can, like, make sure that, like, you know, that's what I should be on. But I definitely go take a pill right now. Anyways, yeah. And that's the only time she wants to take a pill. Oh, my blood sugar is really, really high. That's the time to take a pill. No. You take the pill before it starts spiking and you eat healthy and, and you do what you can do to repair your health. You don't use pills or insulin to fix your F ups. Do you understand? You don't use insulin. You don't use pills as a way to continue to have B moments, which is what you're doing. That's really high. I don't know. Well, I washed my hands, but then I had like a, there's like, you know, what really ticks me off is the fact that there are so many people out there that are diabetic. And, and insulin is a very precious thing. It's a very precious resource that a lot of people need. And here's Chantal misusing it. She's putting herself in a position where she's insulin resistant and she's not taking her pills right. And she might get to a point where the pills don't work at all. And the insulin may not work either. But there's lots of people out there that are diabetic that require the insulin shots. And the insulin that she might get, that she is abusing and misusing, it could go to somebody else that actually does care for their health, that does really require it. And they're not hurting themselves or using the insulin or the pills as a workaround to keep an addiction going. Just wasted resources on her. Fruit. There's like watermelon residue on the table. But I use the thing. I don't know. I'm confused. I mean, I feel okay. I don't feel dizzy or anything. The normal is between. I know, babe. It's bad. Oh, oh, so look at that. Mr. Salah, he knows a little bit about how things are supposed to go. I'm sure because of Chantal, he had to get a little bit educated. So he even said the normal must be between 6 to 7.5. So I don't know if he knew that before he met Chantal or because of her and her diabetes and going to the hospital and talking to doctors, if all of that uh, got him a little bit educated on the fly. But he knows that. He knows what a normal reading should look like. So when she pops up with 22, he's got to know, hey, this isn't normal. It's like discouraging because I lost weight. I guess that doesn't have. You didn't lose weight, you big liar. Anything to do with diabetes in a way, does it? <clears throat> Maybe like zero sugar. Like I shouldn't have any fruit at all. Yeah, it's MMOL. I didn't drink. Any you need to cut down on the fruit. You need to cut down on the carbs. You need to cut down on the bread. Sugary drinks out. Absolutely out. You, you really got to be on top of that, Chantal. But you're not. You're telling Salah one thing. You're doing one thing in front of his face. You're acting one way so you don't get yelled at. And as soon as he walks out that door, you do what you want. 
And then you wonder, why am I dizzy? Why is my vision being affected? Why am I dragging my foot? Why can't I breathe? Why am I having chest pains? Why is my mobility screwed? Why can't I see my feet? I mean, these are all things you cause to happen. Any fruit juice, because the fruit juice I bought, I was like, I thought it said no sugar added. But when I drank it, it was still sweet. So that's what that was it. I had like a sip, but I've been eating a lot of fruit. Yeah, I've been eating like plums, peaches. Hey, cheers. Yeah, and look at her smirking about it. I know that I shouldn't be eating fruit. I'm sure the doctor told her that be careful with the fruit, just like the doctor told her with the carbs, just it enough carbs to fill up the palm of your hand. And she took that as, oh, put all the rice on a hubcap and put it on your hand and that works. The doctors have already given her an education about what she should be eating and how much. You don't want to hear it. She's like, I, I don't want a bland diet. I don't want healthy food. I want sweet. Give me sweet. If I can't have Starbucks, if I can't have my sweet sugary coffee, I'll take the fruit because there's sugar in there. I'll find a way to get to that sugar. Trump. <sighs> I can't get Ozempic here. It's out of the question. So, so Leslie Cat says Ozempic now. Thing is, Chantal was on Ozempic, Leslie. Like a while, while ago, she was on Ozempic. Back in the days when she was seeing Natter. She, her mother did the Ozempic and had a healthy diet, exercise, lost weight. Ozempic really can't give you a tremendous weight loss, though. It can give you a little bit but not the amount that Chantal really needs to lose. It can't help you lose hundreds of pounds. But Chantal got the Ozempic and she made a big deal doing the Ozempic on camera. Thing is, she didn't like the way it made her feel. She didn't like the fact that the Ozempic prevented her from having B moments. It stopped her from having the B moments and she did not like the Ozempic doing that to her. So she stopped taking it. So after the Ozempic, she went on the party favor diet. She was doing the Coca-Cola. You understand? And she actually lost weight on that. You know, she had energy and she was live streaming all day. Stupid way to lose weight, but that's what she did. But that's the only thing that worked with her. Doing that, it distracted her from, from thinking about food. It gave her energy. It made her feel up. So that's what she did for a while. She lost about 70 pounds, but the Ozempic did not work. Plus on top of that, Ozempic is very expensive. A one month supply, <laughs> it's over a thousand dollars. She ain't got that kind of money no more. And really it wouldn't make sense for her to buy it anyway if she's not gonna stick with it. Cause that's a lot of money to spend on something you're not gonna stick with. So no, no Ozempic, no Manjaro, nothing. So it would have to be like, you know, good old, I'm going to try, I'm just going to take my meds consistently and see. Yeah, but you don't. See, and see the doctor about it. Why? You don't listen to them. Yeah. Don't like, seriously, don't waste their time. There are so many people in the world that get sick. They need medical attention. They need medical advice. They need to see a doctor. Unless you're ready to listen to people, don't waste their time. Let somebody else get in line ahead of you and get the help. Somebody who might need the help, want the help, will do what the doctor tells them because you're not ready. You're just a waste of, you're a waste of time and resources. Stay home. No sugar added is full of sugar. Yeah. Well, it's natural sugar, but it's still sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Like you don't even go to the doctor to get help anyway. You basically go to doctors, you're med shopping. Let's tell the truth. You're doctor shopping. That's not good. <clears throat> That's really high. <laughs> it goes over 20 to call 911 immediately. I feel fine. I don't know. Should I try it again? 
start pounding some water. Yeah. I mean, I do drink, like, I drink water all day long, right? Because of my thing. I'm not, no, I haven't had Berber in. Okay, so yes, Chantal just confessed she just ate watermelon. Dee Dee says, watermelon residue on the table. So you ate watermelon, which is the fruit that is the highest in sugar? Of course she did. Of course she did, because she's looking for the most amount of sugar. If she can't get it one way, she'll get it another. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know if like I I use the this alcohol swabs that would take anything away if there was like any resi residual sugar or anything. And when I woke up, I washed my face and my hands, and I did voodoo and everything. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the doctor that was looking over me and prescribed me the medicine. Blah blah blah. I want to see Salah show up and give her crap. <laughs> I'm salty like that. I I love to see her squirm. She's not squirming right now because he's not there. But once he shows up and she takes her blood sugar reading in front of him, she starts squirming because she got she's the the, the monitor is squealing on her. It is snitching, snitching. But I usually have to take them with something to eat and I'm not hungry. I want to eat this plum. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> it was like a wrapper from the thing. That plum is gone. What I what I tell y'all, when you got someone who's got a food problem, if you can reach out and touch it or grab it, it's too close. The only way to really stop yourself from eating something you're not supposed to eat, don't have it in the house. Any, do not even have it in the house. Make it a pain in the butt to eat it. Make it a whole process. If you got cupcakes in the house or cake, or cookies, or one of your favorite things, and it's right there, you're going to eat it just because it's there. But if the cookies, and the ice cream, and the cakes, and the pies, and whatever else, if they're at the store, there's a whole process you got to go through to get to them. You're like, oh my God, I got to put my shoes on. I got to get in the car. I got to go all the way to the store. I got to walk to the store. I got to get them, go to the checkout counter, pay for them, bring them back here. Like a whole multi-step process. And just thinking about that process might stop you from eating it in the first place. I can't eat plums. Hi, Melly. Then, then give it to Salah and let him walk out of the house. with. All, he needs to walk through that house, grab up all the fruit, and take it with him when he leaves to stop her from eating it. He leaves it there, she's going to eat it. This has to be a troll. Okay, Rich Lux and Pete. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to do. Jenna's blocked again? Or did I <laughs> never unblock her? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Since last night. Like, um, when did you, when did I eat? Not eat, like, when did I eat? Yeah, about 6 p.m. Five, between 5 and 6, somewhere like that. Lies. 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 You mean to tell me this carb addict, this food addict, she's going to stop eating at 5 or 6 in early evening. And she's a night owl. She's up all night. So she's going to be up all night and eat or drink nothing. Is that what she's trying to tell me when carb cravings are the worst at night and she's going to have the power to resist? No, no, I don't believe it. Don't believe it. You're sitting in a house by yourself. You're bored. You're anxious. You're nervous. You know, like your, your, your head is just spinning with all those chaotic thoughts and you're not going to turn to your go-to. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Liar, liar. so that is really high 
Maybe that's why I'm so tired all the time. Okay. In any case, what I need to do is, yeah, it's cut up the fruit for now. I'm not nauseous at all anymore. That's why I'm feeling a lot better. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to test like, and I'm not, I don't want to test my blood until like two hours after I eat something. And like when I'm fasting, right? So I woke up, so I should be fasting. I mean, I can't verify this. This is just a theory. I have a feeling at some point Chantal had a bee moment. And she thought she was being so incredibly smart and clever. Knowing Chantal, she probably figured, you know what? I can have a bee moment and I'm doing a live today. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some medication that will lower my blood sugar to where it looks normal for everybody in the room. She thought it would be low enough after a certain time period that she could show her reading and it would look somewhat normal. She did not count on the fact, though, that it would be dangerously high still. Hi, Jessica. Sala's here. My living room is so cute. Thanks, Mila. No, I'm not going to eat something and test. You have to wait two hours. Hey, wolf pup. Yeah, ICP. <laughs> For sure. <coughs> okay, Excuse I'm going to go Sorry. with my hands. I'm sick of it. I'm seriously sick of it. This is concerning. You're not that concerned. You keep you keep sneak eating. You're not that concerned. I don't know. But it's been high like that before. Like a few times. You know, every Anybody else notice that like it just things are just getting worse and worse. Every time Chantal has gone back to Canada, even for a week or two weeks, she always ends up making herself sick. Like she'll go to the Chinese buffet. Next thing you know, she's in the ER. She's at the clinic. Getting fluids and all that. Always making herself sick because of her problem with food. And, and it, it, it's not so much of a cycle anymore. It's a circle. It's just spinning faster and faster because she's so obsessed with food. Blood sugars go high when ill. That is why DKA usually happens when sick. And you know what? I'm going to say something. Some of you beezers, those of you that are catered to the food fetish, those of you that I've seen in the chat, that you know she's got an issue with food. You know it well. She's told you. She has said outright, I have an issue with food. I've got an obsession with food. I think about food 24-7. She's let you guys know about all her health issues. You know how sick she is. There are some of you in the chat that you come in there, and I don't know what's wrong with you, but you're constantly talking about food to her, knowing how wrong it is. Because it's wrong to talk about the source of somebody's addiction to an active addict. Because you might be triggering them to do the, the thing that they're addicted to. You know, some of the, those of you that are doing that, you suck. You really, really suck. But I'm going to be fair because I'm a fair person. Those of you in Chantal's chat, like you, you've not been around for years, like a lot of us have been. You don't know the lore. Here's something you should be made aware of. Chantal is emotionally manipulative. And her coming on camera and saying things and doing things and making herself sick purposely making herself sick 
because she wants to be the center of attention and keep you guys in a state of stressful suspense, keeping you guys worried over her, concerned over her. It is wrong and it is emotionally manipulative. She's an abusive person. And in my opinion, her doing that to y'all is a form of abuse. She's abusing you as audience members. She's being most unkind and most cruel because there's a lot of you in the chat that you care about her more than she cares about herself. If she cared about any of you, she would make at least a small effort to take care of herself and she does not. She purposely keeps herself sick because she wants the sympathy and she wants the attention and that's how she wants to get it. You will never have a moment where you log in to her lives or her videos and you're going to feel positive. You're never going to be able to relax. You're never going to hear Chantal say, I feel good today. I feel really, really good. I've got great energy. I want to share that with y'all. Let's go do something fun today. I'm sorry. You're waiting for that. It'll never happen. She's not that type. She's, she's not in that mindset. She's not about creating and sharing positive energy. It's, oh, you're logging in to be my free therapist and listen to me trauma dump all over you. And also you're here and I'm going to be emotionally manipulative and I'm going to keep you worried about me when I'm the person with all the problems and I should be solving some of them. She wants applause for her pity party. She wants super chats for her pity party. Just realize it for what it is. A manipulative, cruel, evil woman who doesn't care about none of y'all. What is 777? <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to take my medication and see what happens in like a couple days. But I'm, I'm going to see a doctor or something. <laughs> So Salah's kind of confused right now. He says it was 21 and now 22 within 10 minutes in between just how, I don't know. Uh, she did mention that her hands were dirty. I didn't eat. Maybe the device is wrong. I did. I just, just washed my hands with soap. I don't know. But anyway, I don't know why I do this live. <laughs> get everyone all upset. You wanted that though. You wanted people to get upset. You want them to be concerned. You want them to be stressed out. That's just part of the course for your content, Chantal. You want your audience to worry for you at the same time you're not worried about yourself and you're not working on yourself. I'm telling you, Beezers. It's this is being one of her beezers is not a fun ride. There's no fun on that roller coaster. It's all bad. And you got a choice. Either stay on that roller coaster and get more and more sick. Go further and further down the hole with Chantal. Or when you're ready, step off the roller coaster and, and relax. Take a deep breath. As long as you're around Chantal, she's not going to let you breathe. <laughs> Let's just, I don't know if it's accurate, honestly. Desert Rose, I feel okay. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm just going to drink water for now. And, but yeah. So West Coast last, does the Salah still have a car? Does Kuwait have ambulances? That's a deathly high blood sugar, Chantal. Well, I just showed the thing on Twitter. Ambulances are rare, they said, and only used in dire, dire emergencies. And considering the fact that she's almost 600 pounds, would the ambulance be big enough to transport her? Would there be enough people around to put her safely on the stretcher? 
in an emergency event, every second counts. Y'all got to figure in if something happened at home, you know, they got, they, they got to get to the apartment. First of all, they got to have the proper personnel to put her on the stretcher to load her up safely. Meanwhile, the seconds are counting down. Uh, someone of Chantal's size, really difficult to do CPR. And what if something happens and she's by herself? She won't have the strength to pick up the phone and call uh, the, the, the version for 911 in Kuwait. And even if Salah were there, he's got to call and, and get somebody out there if possible. But he can't carry her to the car and get her to the hospital. There's so many factors working against her and she does not care. If something happened to her and she's by herself at the house, she doesn't even know how to speak Arabic to explain her situation and where she's at. I'm not calling an ambulance. I'm okay. It's not. It's a battery operated one. Yeah, MMOL. I don't feel any different. I feel fine. Like, then every day. But like a bit, like, I'm always a bit tired, but I don't know. Yeah, that's fasting. That should, that should scare the crap out of you, Chantal. If you, if you truly have gone hours and hours without eating and your blood sugar is that high, that should scare the crap out of you. But honestly, I don't think you went that long without eating. I think you have been doing some sneak eating. You're just telling Salah what he wants to hear. And when he's gone, you do your own thing. You're lying to him. You're lying. And eventually you're going to get caught. Salah, I'm telling you, bro, do a sweep of that house. Look in all the closets. Look around. When she lived with Bibi, she was hiding pizza boxes in the closet to the point where there was a roach infestation because of her. Look in the closets, bro. Look under the bed. Look in little cab and little cubby corners. If she's ordering fast food, she's got to put that garbage somewhere. And she's not going to walk downstairs and throw it in the dumpster. Look around, bro. I'm telling you, you'll find stuff. Look underneath the cabinets. But I, I'm going to see a doctor anyways. For sure. Test the law. <laughs> Babe, do you want me to test you to see if it works? And that's really smart by the chat. Well done, Beezers. Well done. You know, I don't praise you guys very often, but that was smart. Chantal's over there saying there's something wrong with the monitor. There's something wrong with it. So smart move saying, hey, Salah's there. Test him now. Let's see what his reading says. If his reading is kind of wonky, that means you must be right, Chantal. It is messed up, but his reading is not messed up. His reading is normal, but yours isn't. That means the monitor is fine. It should be fine. It's brand new and out of the box. Why would it be messed up already? I think it's accurate. I probably just have really, really out of whack sugar because I've been eating a lot of fruit and um, I'm still sick kind of, you know, so I don't know. You know, everybody handles sick differently. I realize that. I acknowledge that. When you get sick, some people, they just don't eat. Some people do eat. It depends on what you're sick with. But I would think that if you were not feeling well, you wouldn't be going crazy with the sugar. Even if you were hungry, you're not going to go crazy with the sugar because that really doesn't help you feel better. But anyway... I'm, don't worry, I'm going to see a doctor about it. That's really high, yeah. I'll test it out in a few hours. I took my medication. So, where's Julia? She's behind the curtains. <laughs> I know they always say that. Um, oh, you're still here, Pete. <laughs> okay, enjoy your stream, Pete. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Give us a bad joke on your way out. I know, Millie, I know. I didn't think that's unusual. So I didn't know that, that Pete was in the room. 
So I guess Pete's decided to stop by for Pete's. I mean, like, look, Pete's is a jerk. I say that because of the way he treated BBJ and the way he took care of his cat, Timbit, he did not do as well as he could have when he was Timbit's owner. Poor Timbit did not get the best of care. And the way he treated BBJ, you know, with all her health issues and her ingrown claws, and he was just mean to her. Like, I want to have a talk with Pete's in Minecraft over the way he treated BBJ. Like, just, just go into Minecraft with me, Pete. We, we'll have a conversation. That's right, a conversation. That's it. Grabbing onto her face, saying, no mercy, when the poor baby had rotting teeth. Being resentful of the cat just because Chantal changed the name of the cat from Casey to BBJ, which is very close to the name BB. He's still salty over her relationship with BB, but the cat had no control over the name it was being called. So he took out his, his resentment on the cat versus going to Chantal where it should have gone. Yeah, I got a problem with Pete's. He's over there still waiting for Chantal to come back and take care of him. It ain't going to happen, Pete. Those days are over, bro. Just like Chantal, you need to grow up. Stop looking for someone that you can be codependent on. It would be that high. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy. I'm not going to the ER. Nobody can make me do anything. You know, that's another thing. There's There's been some talk. Why Chantal keeps going to these clinics? Why not go to the ER? Theory. Because with Chantal being, I guess, an expat or a tourist, she's on a tourist visa. If she's doctor shopping or she's got all these kind of health problems, if she went to an actual hospital or an ER, there would be a trail. There would be a record of what's wrong with her and how often she's going versus a clinic where there might not be a record. There might not be a trail left behind. Freaking out all my people. <clears throat> I haven't had that fruity taste in a long time in my mouth. Like I'm feeling okay. Like I feel normal. I don't know. Yeah. Lots of sugar. I know. I have to be really, really, really strict, really stricter, more strict, strict. Cause I'm just like equating like, Oh, I lost 15 kg. I'm eating natural food. You didn't eat. You did not lose weight. If you lost the weight, we'd be able to tell in your face, Chantal. I, I don't, I, I'm honest in being right now. I'm not being a hater. I do not see a loss of weight in your face. I just don't see it. Food, but I guess when you're insulin resistant, you can't just, you know. Yeah. So Melanie says your face looks so much different than your last video. That's because she's using different filters. One minute it looks like a watermelon. The next minute it looks like a football. The next minute it looks like an hourglass, like a like a puffy hourglass. It's the filters. You can even see the filters working. Look, look. You want to know how? You want to know how I know? Let me point it out to you. It's all about natural aesthetics. Look at it through an artist's eye, the natural aesthetics, like what, what makes sense. Okay, so let's let's look down here. I know it's kind of dark, but just follow me here. Okay, look at her cheeks. Look at how wide and how big her cheeks are. Then there would stand to reason the rest of her head, her face, is going to be the same symmetry, right? If her cheeks are big and wide then her forehead is also going to be big and wide. The body will find a way to balance out the weight. It'll put the weight evenly. So it doesn't make sense to have big, huge cheeks and then have a narrow chin. No, the weight's going to go all the way down. It's going to extend from here down. 
you can see where the filter is working. Like you, you can see how the filters are working, like right here at the corner of the eyes. Okay, like she, she knows she can't get away with a skinny face, with an elf face, but you can see the indentations near her eyes, wide cheeks, and a much more narrow uh, chin. That's a combination of like fabric filter and face filter. I bet she'd look a whole lot different if she took the abaya off and the hijab off and took the filters off. I mean, it would be quite shocking. I mean, she's got several filters working right now. She's got the skin smoothing filter to cover up her face blemishes. She's got the big eye filter because her eyes are much, much smaller. She's got the contour filter on the bottom half of her face. She's got filters on top of filters. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. If I start feeling worse or whatever, I'm going to see a doctor anyways about it. So. And that's the bad thing about her. She waits until the absolute last minute to do something. If you keep doing that, it may be too late. It may be too late, Chantal. I don't think they have house call doctors. I don't know. <laughs> she knows her body. Gotta see my blood sugars. Like the last time I went, the one time I went to see the doctor it was 23. And um, you're going to come test. Okay, babe. Wash your hands. <laughs> and... Um, they always just keep, they don't put me on insulin. They just put me on these pills, which I should take. Oh, I don't want diabetes. But you have diabetes. This is really sick. There's so many people in our chat. They're like, 400 blood sugar is insane. You need to go to the emergency room. That is that is diabetic coma level. People are freaking out in her chat. And it's her fault because she chose to come online and drop a video and do a live talking about her blood sugar. So she wanted to talk about it and she wanted to spotlight it and she wanted to turn it into spectacle and content and freak everybody out. At the same time, she's not doing anything to fix this. That's what makes it wrong. You are worrying people for no random reason. Other than the fact that you want attention and you want the spotlight. You want everybody to feel sorry for you. I don't. I've been watching you too long, Chantal. Way too long. I have watched you over the years hurt yourself. And I've seen thousands upon thousands of people get into your chat, carrying Beezers. They tried. They tried to help you. They gave you advice. You didn't listen. They wanted the best for you. You didn't listen. Other people came forward and offered help. Remember Papa Swolio? That he offered to let you into his health program? his Facebook group, a support group of sorts. And you were on board because you thought Papa Swolio was cute. But once you found out he wasn't going to personally train you, you dropped out. A lot of people have tried to help you over the years. And you've slapped everybody's hand away. Because you thought you were smart. And you wanted to do what you wanted to freaking do. Well, here we are. We're at the end of the road. We're at the end of the yellow brick road and there's nowhere else left to go. There's a wall in front. What's you going to do? You're going to dig a tunnel. You're going to put down some more bricks, extend the road or not. What you going to do? Okay. I'll prepare a needle for so long.
he should be normal between what five and six four remember chantal you chose to do this you chose to do a live show off your new monitor do your readings on 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 camera during a live you could have made a video you could have made a video without salah being around you chose to do all this so if if it ended up where you got in trouble with salah because he finally woke up and drank the pot of coffee and realized holy crap this is bad if your stupidity made him wake up hey maybe it was worth it Maybe he needs a wake up call. Maybe he needs a rude awakening. Four and six, something like that. I don't think he's eaten in a while either. So his probably lower. Yeah, isn't that something? His reading is going to be normal if he's not eaten in a while. You're claiming that you haven't eaten in pretty much a day, and yours is at 22. The math ain't mathing. Yeah, honey, do this. Melons are very sweet. I've been eating watermelon. Yeah, you eat, like you know what? Like she's been eating watermelon. She likes watermelon. Okay, watermelon sugar content. Do 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 do. How much sugar is in watermelon? Uh, okay. So how much sugar is in a watermelon? Uh, one serving of watermelon contains about eighteen grams of sugar. This amount of sugar can have an impact on the blood sugar, depending on the amount of watermelon the person is having. So when she says a serving of watermelon, like, is that a cup? Is that half a cup? Um, I guess it all depends. Okay. Is watermelon a low carb fruit? Uh, however, compared with other types of fruit, watermelon is relatively low in carbs. In fact, one cup 152 grams of diced watermelon contains about 11.5 grams of carbs and 0.5 grams of fiber. Well, Chantal is not someone that she does things in a small way. So I doubt that she stopped at like half a cup or a cup of anything. That's probably my fault. That's obviously my fault. So we don't even. Moving on. It's okay. I first worst. Let me see. That's it? Yeah, but you you don't have blood coming out. What? Oh, <laughs> shit. My blood freezing or what? Wait, I gotta squeeze it more. See if this will do it. I don't think it's enough. No. Nope. I gotta pick But this is this was so smart for the chat to go. Well, Salah's there. Test his blood sugar. Let's see if that monitor really works. And it still, it, it does. So she's like, she's caught. She's caught. Sorry. I'm living for the fact that she's caught in a lie. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we, we yeah. got like that. Yeah, there's blood. No, that's not enough blood. I got to make the needle bigger. Okay. Where's my blood? <laughs> Did that hurt you? Hmm? Did it hurt you? No, at all. <laughs> Anastasia, I wish I can be wrong. Get my fingers numb now. <laughs> I'm not getting any blood from you. Yeah, huh? What do you feel about your body now? Do you I feel to okay. To I took a pill. I'm going to wait like um, a couple hours. Take my blood again. Mm -hmm. I'm just up. Maybe the medication, the antibiotics. I don't know. I'm still sick. And we'll see. But yeah, I have to follow up with a doctor eventually there. Eventually. So she's not even like planning on regular checkups at the doctor. I'll go there eventually. I'll take my medication eventually. That's why your blood sugar is so high. Everything is eventually or later or maybe or someday versus right now today this minute like what he will say can he uh, take a medication <laughs> oh he said you should take your medication yeah because uh, last time he said that and he wants to just <laughs> focus on the medication um, yeah I, I don't think that, that you need the insulin right you didn't the, think this so one, like, for the next level yeah but if, if it's not gonna go down then yeah mm. so <clears throat> 
but that's perfect five that's what i want <laughs> you know what chantal i'm not one that i go around wishing bad things upon people i just don't do that but in this case i'll make a bit of an exception i'll make an obsession exception for a reason i want you and salah to have the biggest fight blow up argument you've ever had i want that because I want that fight to lead to him just finally waking up to the fact that what's going on right now, it's only going to get worse. It leads to him putting your butt on a plane and sending you back to Canada, your family. Like this whole situation with you and him just needs to end. It makes no sense to hold on to this thing. It's, it's a done deal. You're hiding in Kuwait, but... You, you can run, but you can't hide. You're not happy in Kuwait. Why, why continue to stay there? So I hope you get into the biggest argument ever and he just snaps on you verbally, not physically now. No, no, no violence here. No, no physical violence. But he just wakes up and realizes, you know what? The juice ain't worth the squeeze. I'm out. You're out. We're done. <laughs> oh. So I'm five, I'm normal. Yeah, you're normal. No, I'm not on steroids. I wish I can uh, get your result uh, and give it to me and you take my result for you. Yeah. yeah, but she can't do that and she doesn't care about her health, bro. Yeah. Like you take my Switch? five. No, I wouldn't want that on you. And I, oh I take your 22. Aww. Just to like, at least you feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you know why you're saying that salah because she's the money maker you're like i wish i could take my results and give them to you and i'll take your results for, for your your results and give them back to me you know why you're saying that because she's the one making the doggone money and you don't want to lose your cash cow i mean let's keep it all the way real bro you're afraid of losing your cash cow you're afraid of her getting sick going to the er and not coming back out alive. And if something happens to Chantal, you're screwed financially. So it was like, I, I wish I could take some of the damage for you. You're not saying that out of love. You're saying that out of self-preservation because you want her to keep on working and paying the bills so you can be a run around, play around while she's back at the house making money for the both of you. It's, it's, you're not saying it out of love. You're saying that out of pure, narcissistic selfishness the two of you are perfect together absolutely perfect <laughs> thanks babe i feel fine guys i'm not like you know normally you would be dizzy and so here's the thing what i'm gonna do is like um drink lots of water lay off any fruit um if in a couple hours like it doesn't go down i'm gonna go to see the doctor Oh, we'll see. How do you say that uh, she look rough? There's no light. And you know what? I'm, I, I just had a thought. I'm going to share my thoughts while I've got them. It would not surprise me at all if Chantal were purposely making herself sick just to keep Salah around and to get extra attention from him. Like the sicker she is, the more he's got to hang out and take care of her and talk to her. She is twisted enough that she would do that, purposely make herself sick to get extra attention from Salah. Please. Look. She's happy. <laughs> <laughs> I look okay. Yeah, it's a dangerous level, I know. I know you guys are making it worse. But I don't know why I took my blood on my stream. I'm stupid. I don't want to worry you guys. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to, uh, don't worry, I'm going to take care of it. It's like, I really um, didn't take my medication like regularly like I should be. be you know, I'm, I've been holding back my tongue through this entire react, but we're almost done here. So I'm just going to let loose. Chantal, you're a dick. You are such a dick. Putting your audience through this making them emotionally stressed out and worried for you. You're a dick. 
You're a dick. You, making people care about your situation when you don't even care. Because it really, really upsets my stomach. But if I have to take it, I have to take it. So I think it maybe will go away after a month or so. I don't know. But if you feel that you want to go to the clinic or hospital, just tell me, Adi. Yeah, I know. Because like you can feel your body, your own yeah. body. Thanks, DDLG. Thanks, Mila. <clears throat> okay, you know what? They're pretty much done. There's like five more minutes. We got the gist of it all. Who cares? Uh, let's go on to the comments and just wrap it up. Uh, Natalie says, it seems like you flat out refuse to face reality. Oh, reality is an ugly place for Chantal. She likes to live in Delulu land. She's lived there for years. She's got, you know, seafront sea, sea property in Delulu land. She's got a, a ranch, you know, countryside villa, country club. I mean, Delulu land is completely, you know, all the way fleshed out. Uh, Jolly Rancher says, the fact that you aren't feeling any side effects from your extremely high blood sugar is actually more concerning, not reassuring. When the body adapts to persistently high blood sugar, the lack of obvious symptoms can trick you into thinking the high levels are not harmful, when in reality, the internal damage may be progressing silently without, oh, there's more, proper treatment. Go to the hospital now. She won't. She's too stupid and she's too cheap to go to the hospital. She's scared to death that if she goes to a hospital, there would be a record of all her health problems and it's gonna cause problems for her when she goes to renew her visa. So she's hiding. She's hiding out in Kuwait from all her problems in Canada, but she's also hiding her issues from Kuwait so that she can keep coming back over and over. Uh, Maduso says, why is this so shocking? You were prescribed medication for a reason. The medication should be taken as prescribed and changes in your diet would be beneficial. Taking meds only when your blood sugar is off the charts is so stupid. You wanting, I don't want diabetes, doesn't change the fact that you have it. Take your medication. Right. Take it, take care of your health, or shut the F up, Chantal. Stop whining and stop crying to people. If you don't care, then don't expect anybody else to care. If you don't care, then don't pe invite people to feel sorry for you because I don't. Uh, Morgan says you should be in the hospital. 400 is crazy. You are so lucky to be alive. This is a medical emergency. Yep, she don't care though. She don't care. Which of the wild woods says the beezers making excuses aren't helping? Agreed. Your blood sugars have been persistently and dangerously high, and the fact that you feel okay is not a good sign. You need a refresher and basic diabetic education if you don't understand the role your diet is playing in the progression of the disease. Like, you know what? She's got access to the internet. She could educate herself real quick, real fast. Wouldn't take that long. If she cared, she would find some stuff out. She doesn't. Uh, Archer lady says not eating is not the answer. Also wear your glasses. You constantly look in pain trying to reach. She's got glasses. Where did they go? Didn't Salah buy her a pair of glasses? Where are they? And why isn't she using them? Okay, that's it. We're going to stop here. Hope you guys enjoyed the react. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. I'm going to go ahead and open up the front door and let some fresh air in here because it is kind of hot. I'm just sweating. So I'm going to check out Chantal's other stuff, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.